Hello and welcome everyone. This is Coach Carol and I'm back with another series of family history brainstorming sessions and the use of AI to help you as a writer to record your family history stories. In this series, I'll give you some step-by-step -step process for creating some incredible stories. And today is focused on telling a story about an heirloom. When I did some research today with my favorite assistant, ChatGPT4, I asked this question and asked AI to help me write an essay on how we can incorporate family heirlooms into our ancestral stories. I've made sure that I've told Chat that our audience is genealogists and family historians and that the purpose to, is to help them write their stories about their family heirlooms because heirlooms are an important facet in telling family history stories. Your family history is often to be about those artifacts that you have been handed down by ancestors. It could be in the form of Bibles or hymnals, as you see here in this slide. Or maybe it's a key to a special locked box. Often there is jewelry that is handed down from one generation to the next, possibly furniture, even musical instruments like a piano, an old watch, or perhaps some old toys. There are myriads of things that are handed down to us as heirlooms. But they're more than just objects. They are part of your family story. So if we can incorporate them into our narrative, we need to do so with care a delicate touch. We don't just merely catalogue and take an image of that item. We need to strive to understand what its significance is before we can tell an engaging story. So how do we do that? Well, you begin by researching the provenance of the heirloom itself. And in a moment, I'll show you a few questions that you can ask about such objects, like these that might be handed down. Toys like this old rocking horse or this old teddy bear, owned by members of your family and faithfully handed down. Do you know who owned them? What about an old family photo album? Whose was it and who put it together? Do you have a cache of old diaries? Who wrote them and who were they written for? Have you had jewellery handed down from great grandmama? When did she wear that? What is the story behind its purchase? Or what about your great grandfather who might have been in the war and been awarded a medal for his bravery? There's a story attached to that one, I'm sure. Or an old clock. Maybe there's a story about how it was found, purchased or given. So these lead us to the questions about what is the provenance of each of the heirlooms? And we ask ourselves these three questions. Who did it belong to? How did it come into their possession? And what role did it play in their lives? And by doing this, we actually answer the questions and get a wealth of information and a new perspective on our family history. So how do you write this heirloom story? What are the components? Well, of course, first of all, let's take an image of the heirloom itself and answer those questions about the provenance. Let's go back. And of course, 
realise the importance of each heirloom. So those three components are the starting point for you to record your heirloom story. Next, you'll want to know who is your audience. Are you writing this for your cousins of the same age? Or are you writing it for your descendants of a much younger age? This will help determine the language you use and how you set the story out to engage with, with each audience. And why are you telling this story? Why is it important? What is your purpose in telling the story? I'm sure that for most of us, telling our heirloom stories is to keep our ancestors' lives alive for our generations to come. These heirloom stories and their components form the basis of creating and preserving your family history. Now, I'm sure you're thinking about all those things that possibly are in your own possession or in the possession of some of your cousins or other members of your family. Any of these items require you to, first of all, preserve it with an image and then start to think about how you would relate the story of each of them. There's been a couple of these examples that I wanted to highlight for you. And I'll just move that piece out of the way there. These are unique treasures with fascinating stories. And they've come to light from a particular website that I found. And I'll share that with you in a moment. The first one is about a saxophone mouthpiece that belonged to a jazz musician from the Netherlands. The next is about a crystal cake plate that belonged to a grandmother. And the third one is about a case, a union case, which had two photographs on the front who are believed to be the second great grandparents of the genealogist. Now, if these spark an interest for you, you can go ahead and find out a little bit more if you go to this site, which I'll post beneath this video. They're called the heirloom stories. And in this case, you're going to a blog item at familysearch.org to find out about how genealogists share heirlooms and tell stories from their family tree. And you'll find those three examples that I listed in the previous slide. It's an engaging read. So do find yourself a little time and go to that link. Now, what's the next step? All right, so you've done all your homework and you know the provenance, you know why you're telling your story and who it's for. Next step for me was a quirky one, I know. I like ChatGPT and how it can be very creative for me if I give it enough information in my prompt. So in this prompt, I'm asking GPT-4 to create a short fictional story about discovering a precious family heirloom. I've mentioned myself in here as genealogist, Grena May, and how I'm keen to pass on the provenance of the antique and I give three pieces of evidence there, who it belonged to, why it was handed down, and what the item was used for. But it's all a bit of a mystery as to what this actual heirloom piece is found in an old Edwardian cabinet. So I'm giving ChatGPT a bit of license here to write this short fictional story. And I was delighted with the result. I really think that this story could be the beginning of something that I would like to write for myself. I also asked GPT-4 to come up with a title. For example, the one on the left, The Secret of the Edwardian Cabinet. And I also asked ChatGPT to give me a quote that I could use at the beginning of the story. 
And all of that was done within minutes. So now I have a title, The Secret of the Edwardian Cabinet, and a quote, unearth the secrets of the past and you'll discover the strength of your lineage. A perfect quote. Of course, it's made up. So I've attributed it to Anonymous in the front uh, cover of this supposed book that I would be writing. It's all fictional, of course, but I had a great deal of fun in going through the steps that I've just shown you. Let me now take you across to my chat GPT and show you a little bit of the results. So here is me asking for a sentence quote to use on the cover of the book. But before that, I had given it license to write this short fictional story and has come up with this delightful short story about myself who have been working on tracing my lineage and solving one mystery about my great aunt Eliza's missing heirloom. So now I have the beginning of a story. Of course, I need to change this into my own writing and I can do that in a number of different ways. But this is a really good start for me to create an heirloom story. I hope that you have enjoyed watching this particular video. Let me just stop sharing right now. And I encourage you to consider using AI to help you write your family stories. Of course, you may not be wanting to write something fictional. You might want to write a factual story about your own handed down heirloom that you are most proud of and would like to share with your readers. Good luck on your journey and I'll be back with more real soon.